After five seasons of competitive Overwatch, coming up with tips to share really is not the easiest task, and that has nothing to do with players having reached a level of gameplay that is near flawless at all. In fact, even in Hayu Elo, you still come across many, many players doing very basic mistakes. And that, of course, can be infuriating. It isn't only me who has shared tips for competitive play over and over again. Much bigger, much more relevant channels have done the same thing. But the problem is that players who should watch videos like that usually don't, and and rather than hammering on mistakes right now, as trust me, I would love to do, I will try to focus on the portion of my audience that still cares about improvement. Today, my friends, I'll give you five quick advanced tips and tricks for competitive play in Overwatch. Again, tips and tricks are all over YouTube, so you might know these things already, but hey, the guy before or after you might not, so let's try to help those who need it. Number 1. Sharing heals for ultimate charge One thing that can really give your team an edge is having your ultimates at your disposal when the enemies think you don't. One way of optimizing ultimate gain as a support is by coordinating heals with the other support on your team. If your mercy already has rest then there's no reason for it to pump healing into your Winston if you just won an engagement. Rather, let your Lucio or Zenyatta do it. Straight after winning team fights, there's obviously nothing that can really damage you or your team. In these moments it is important to allow your healers to to charge their ultimates for the next engagement. As a support, make sure you coordinate with the other support on your team, and for everyone else, please don't go run into a health pack. Number 2. Only take fights that are worth taking. How often did you run your face into a wall in real life just to eventually learn that it doesn't help you get into the room behind said wall? If your answer is anything but zero, then this tip is definitely going to change your world. For King of the Hill, all you need to win is roughly 90 to 95% on the capture point. Your objective should be to stall into that if possible. But if you're already on 99%, then there's no reason to invest ultimates to try and win the team fight if you're already two man down. Sure, there's always the chance that your Dragon Blade absolutely annihilates the enemy team, but the safer way is to simply disengage, toss yourself off the map or let the enemies kill you to then re-engage with 6 men on a massive ultimate advantage. If there's no reason to take risks then don't. There's no point wasting ultimates on a payload checkpoint you already won as much as there's no point in trying to 6v1 on King of the Hill when all you need is one team fight to win. So always keep your eyes peeled for checkpoints or mini objectives before throwing your ultimates into a team fight that you should not take. Number 3. Counter by denying value Now I don't want to get too in detail about this because I literally made an entire video dedicated to countering which also covers the act of denying value, so let me just give you a quick TLDR. If you ever run into a situation where either an enemy player is extraordinarily strong on their pick so you can't counter them, or nobody on your team has the skills necessary to counter a troublesome hero, then rather than trying to counter them, try to deny them value. Denying value in general is always a good practice. For example, if you can't kill a Widowmaker on your own as Genji because she keeps getting pocketed and has mad aim, then rather than trying to kill her, make it so she is utterly useless. Play Orisa or Reinhardt to give her as much of a hard time picking your teammates off as possible. Diva is also a great hero when it comes to denying value in general thanks to her defense matrix. So this point is really just about expanding your horizon. Don't think about a situation as black and white. Don't focus solemnly on trying to hard counter when you're clearly not equipped to take that role. Rather, think about ways to deny value to the enemies. Number 4. Don't just feed before an engagement. Or actually, sometimes you should. What I mean by that is that there's a right and a wrong way of approaching pre-engagement situations. The wrong way is to just stand in a choke when you're waiting to regroup while taking tons of damage from the enemies. Take a step back, make sure you don't run into the risk of getting picked off before the engagement even starts and don't feed ultimate charge to the enemies. However, if you are at an advantage, let's say you've kept the point on King of the Hill or you just beat the attackers off the payload, then you can take advantage of this habit that players have that is unnecessarily spamming damage out. Obviously you don't want to take so much damage that you run into the risk of dying, but taking splash damage here and there in a situation where odds are that the enemies have their ultimates anyway, it might be good to soak a bit to give your supports their ultimates. Just make sure you communicate that with your healers. And lastly, number 5, the game is not won only because you won an engagement. Too often have I seen players who just 
just sit their ass on the payload after capping, for example. You should always be worrying about the next fight. Always be ready for the enemies coming at you. There is a variety of things you can do to make sure you shift a teamfight in your favor early on. For example, as Tracer, you could pulse bomb someone out of spawn. On payload maps, you might not even have to go as far as to going anywhere near the enemy spawn. Your team just has to make sure they keep the entrances covered. Obviously, the enemies will have to contest your payload. And there are only so many places where they can come from. Try to take the fight to them early. If you catch the enemies off guard early, then you can often get great value out of your ultimates. So try to get creative. Don't just sit your ass on the objective waiting for the enemies to come at you. Make sure the enemies never have a smooth entrance into an engagement and make sure you always keep them pressured. If you keep catching them off guard and make sure they can never properly regroup, then you'll always have the upper hand. But this is me done for the day. So I talk about five advanced tips and tricks for ranked that I don't see players use anywhere near often enough. If you enjoyed the video, then do let me know by dropping me a like on your way out. Subscribe if you want to see more and I hope to see you all next time. That Genji has no cooldown, no cooldowns up top. He's one, 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 he's one. Does he want? I can't tell! In the air, I got him, I got him.